crunchy. Bad news for the Beamer. Welcome to Hack a Week. The wheel is uh, locked up solid because it's in second gear. I already broke loose the other three bolts. So I should be able to just spin those out by hand now. and then remove the rear wheel. Tight fit. Gotta pull the caliper off. Eight millimeter Allen wrench or a socket, Allen socket. We'll flip this right over and just stick it up here somewhere where it won't fall. Out comes the wheel. Okay, back over to this side. Now the disc in the ABS ring assembly needs to come off. And that's held on with these Allen head bolts. And they are Loctited in with some of that wonderful BMW Loctite stuff. You have to heat it up. So we've got to heat up that bolt to about 250 degrees Fahrenheit. And to do that, you could use a heat gun or you could uh, use a map gas torch. I've got a fan blowing just a little bit of air through here. So any accumulated gas fumes or flammable stuff like that's just going to drift away from the flame. I'm just going to let that heat soak into that bolt and help loosen the Loctite. I'll hit it one more time with the flame and then we'll bust it loose. Here you can see the blue Loctite that's on the bolts. It's on other stuff up throughout the bike too and it's really important that you warm it up. In some places it can screw up the threads if you just try uh, manhandling it out without warming it up first. All right, now that we've got those out, this is all just basically loose and nice and warm. Ooh. So, uh, lots of oil. It was leaking out pretty bad. And that means that the seal was getting compromised, which means that this was doing this, you know, not real bad. I've seen pictures of this way worse, but what we're gonna see when we pull all this apart is uh, probably some really messed up ball bearing looking stuff. These bolts are seven millimeter Allen. And when you loosen them, do it in a crisscross pattern. Go here, here, back over to here somewhere, to here, to here, 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 here. Relieve the tension on everything in a nice universally. Before I rotate this and forget, this is where I wanted that uh, orange mark to be so that I put the disc back on in the same place. This cover has to come off now, and to do that, we're gonna give it a few little uh, love taps. Hopefully it'll come out fairly easy, and the race will probably stay behind in the final drive, the bearing and its race, I'm not sure which. It's wiggling already, I can feel that. But... All right, I don't like the idea of screwdrivers around things like this to get them apart. However, in this case, what I'm gonna do is see if I can pry on this. There's a little bit of a lip on this black part. It's a little bit bigger than the silver part. And uh, if I can just catch a little of that lip and pry against something like sticking out here, like the arm where it sticks down and not the actual housing. Don't want to hurt the housing. Then I can probably just pop this thing right off pretty easily. There 
go. Now there's an O-ring in here that seals everything. And by the weight of this, it feels like, yep, the ring gear, everything is coming out with it at once. Before I do anything with this, I want you to hear what this bearing sounds like spinning in the housing. Oh God, that's terrible. Okay. I've got this jigged up on a kind of primitive housing, but it's to make a point. You can do this as a roadside repair. That's two bricks, a couple of boards, the thing's sitting there. We're gonna just smack the hell out of it right there in the middle. It should just pop out. I've seen a few photographs on the net uh, showing some people doing this as a roadside repair. You can just use the toolkit you have in your bike. And then for stuff like this, you know, you can get pretty creative if you can just find a junk pile or a gas station somewhere. Well, let's see what happens. That's about it. Wow, pieces. Pieces came out, folks. Holy sheep shit. Here. Nice, huh? Holy shit, I can't believe I made it home on that. <laughs> wow. By the way, there is a shim in here. Um, if I can catch it with my fingernail, lift it out right there, bearing shim for uh, preload on everything. So make sure you keep track of that, how many are there, etc. So another one of those uh, <clears throat> forum posts I saw said that uh, somebody actually pried one of these off once with two big old screwdrivers, big old screwdrivers. Um, featured, by the way, a couple weeks ago in a, a tire changing video, but anyway, um, let's get some balls on either side, which will help in the prying process. And yeah, they said they just started working it up. And once the bearing started moving, uh, wait a minute, quote, once the bearing started to move, it got easy, quote. So we'll see what happens. I don't know. I kind of have my doubts. <clears throat> yeah. Sure, sure it pried right off. Sure it did. Oh my. Yeah, I don't uh, I don't really think so. As I got looking at this a little further here, I, I see where the, the failure point in this bearing is, you know, the cage. It's not so much the races or the balls, it's the cage. The cage just didn't hold up. If the cage doesn't stay together and keep the balls separated, they do this, where you have big blank spots and then things start wearing concentrically and all goofy and that's why I was driving this in here in kind of a wow 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 yet another technique I read about that was just taking a chisel and working your way around and slamming it in there with a hammer um, you're probably not gonna really hurt the ring gear at all you probably if anything do some damage to the bearing but who cares about the bearing you're just trying to get that off and throw it away put a real one on I just want to try this and see if it actually shocks it upwards at all. Again, I have my doubts. I've pulled lots of bearings off from all kinds of things. Most of them are a pretty good interference fit. Let's see, just for the hell of it, let's see what happens. Actually, a better way might be to put this whole thing on the floor on edge on a piece of wood like that, something I can actually hold the thing whilst I slam on it. Hard to tell if it's moving, but uh, the trick is flip it 180 degrees, smack it again. You know what? That technique is actually working quite nicely. That sucker is coming up off from there. We'll just keep working our way around. So throw a chisel in your toolkit to remove the bearing on your final drive. go it's off you know they say you don't have to do this one every time but I say hell yes I'm in there that bearing is getting replaced as well 
The tricky part is the race that's over here in the, uh, the carrier. Looks like there's a little bit of a lip uh, on the top there. Yeah, there's a there's a tiny bit of a lip on it. So I guess I'm gonna pull it out <laughs> with a little internal puller, I suppose. I don't know. Leaving the thing alone is looking more inviting all the time, but God, I hate to do that. Didn't get the tapered roller bearing off yet. Um, I'm going to go buy a good three-jaw puller to have here at home to do that with. I've ordered up all the parts I need. I've found uh, every single thing I need, which was just basically four items, the uh, bearing, the bearing, uh, a seal, and an O-ring. So I should have those by next week sometime. But this weekend, it's the 4th of July. It's a big celebration here in America. It's when we told the king, hey, piss off. We're going to start our own country. Wow. Uh, weren't we ballsy? Anyway, it's the fourth, so go blow up some crap and celebrate and have a good time. And I'll see you again right here when we get all of the parts in. And we're going to put this together for us before we get to the CB750. Sorry, folks, because I got a ride. It's summer. Okay, till next time. With uh, basically the tool kit you got in the tank. Yeah, you keep your tools in your gas tank. <clears throat> Not really. <laughs> okay.